Well, um, well, um, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and and thank you very much um, uh, for uh, giving me the opportunity to be here and share with you uh, the little that we know about circularity. Um, and the reason why I'm saying that is that I think, in my opinion, we don't know a lot, but the little we know is sufficient and significant enough to uh, literally move forward in this area. Um, why am I saying this? Why I'm saying this is simply because um, the research that we have and the studies about the circular economy literally are like um, separate islands moving in different directions. So there isn't a, a coherent uh, structured model that brings everything together to say, well, okay, well, the circular economy is about basically innovation, the circular economy is about SMEs, the circular economy is about growth, the circular economy is about the environment, the circular economy is about this and so on and so forth. So we do see a lot of these studies and, and, and obviously um, this, is, uh, this is our job in universities to try and look what has been written literally and what is being written about circularity. Now when we say the circular economy we cannot ignore the fact that there is the word economics in there and there is the word economy. Um, and this is the angle which I'm going to be using to address the concept of circular economy. Um, economists um, actually, um, quite frankly, they're being criticized for not being ab able to predict the past. So how can they going to be, in a, be pos in a good position to predict the future? Um, now, um, well, uh, there, there is some truth to that because we live in, a, in, an, in an economic environment that's very, very dynamic and things change and it is not very easy to encompass everything at the same time. Um, but one of the things that I would like to say is that um, economists have defined economics in so many different ways. And, um, and, you know, some economists have defined it from a consumer perspective. Some economists have defined economics from the supply side. Some economists have defined it from the, the, the market side and price mechanism and so on and so forth. But they all agree on the fact that um, economics is the study of the efficient allocation of the scarce resources. So we all recognize that we have a scarce resource issue. So they all agree whether it doesn't really matter the, which part of the economic spectrum you come from, whether it's this, the left or the right or the center, we all agree that we are dealing with a study relating to the efficient allocation of the scarce resources in response to our unlimited ones. So when we ask the question and that is who are we in any economic system? In any economic system we are consumers, or households, we are producers, and these are firms and, 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 and organizations, we are the government, and we are the international sector. So why do I mention these four um, economic agents who make decisions? I mean, um, obviously consumers um, want to make consumption decisions, and as a result they have some kind of an objective function. They want to maximize their satisfaction when it comes to um, consuming, and, 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 and consuming anything. So um, probably, um, and from a behavioral perspective, perspective, more is better than less, and that is a mindset. Um, companies are there, and their objective function is to try and maximize profit. And the maximization of profit, uh, to a large extent, is synonymous with uh, producing more and selling more. And by producing more and selling more, you are by definition going to be using more resources. Um, governments uh, would like to achieve economic growth. If, um, if governments don't show that they're achieving economic growth, then probably they will not be voted back into into office. So economic growth is, is something that we also think about. So governments have to, to, to think about that. But what, what really contributes to economic growth is the fact that you want to consume more and you want to produce more. And, and as a result of consuming more and producing more, we're using more resources. Again, here is an issue. And uh, when it comes to the international sector, the international sector is about trade. And trade is about increasing exports and increasing imports. And again, we go to the, to the issue of, uh, of increasing consumption and increasing uh, production. So, I mean, um, having said all of that, I mean, it is it is inevitable, and we can see that there's going to be pressure on on the resources that we have in in our economies. Um, and as was mentioned earlier, I mean, over the years, um, when we think about economic growth, economic growth has been linear. So, take, make, and dispose. So, we never thought about okay, well, can we uh, literally think about this concept of um, I mean, the, the concept of, of reusing, not only recycling, because I mean, a lot of people, when you say circular economy, a lot of people think about the concept of recycling, but it is not about recycling.
recycling only. It is about reusing. It is about remanufacturing. It is about repurposing. Uh, it is about uh, basically uh, reintroducing that re, 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 which is a very important part of the, of the, of the term. So, so um, uh, the, the issue here, can we think about a model that takes that into account? Um, um, I would like to really emphasize, and that is, uh, you know, this model is old and new at the same time. In the good old days, unlike, you know, probably our grandparents used to reuse uh, a lot of the things that they had, and, and they reproduced some of the things that they already produced. And the question that we need to ask when it comes to circularity is that can we now come to a model and have a model where the, the, the current products and materials that we have can be reused um, as a resource for future uh, products and materials. That's the idea here. Um, I, mean, uh, I mean, of course, it's not an easy, there isn't an easy answer to that. Um, I mean, it is going to be challenging, but I think this is a whole point about thinking about the circuit economy uh, to try and find out, uh, well, how can we literally, in the best possible way, uh, introduce a system where um, it can reduce our dependence on resources. Remember there has been a, 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 a model, and still is, probably something called um, uh, planned obsolescence. And planned obsolescence, a lot of companies literally use that, and then probably produce something with a view that's going to be used for the next three years, four years, whatever the case might be. Now, if you do have this concept of a planned obsolescence, a lot of people think, well, okay, well, a, a circular economy is going to um, be... Um, contradictory to the to the to the uh, and a paradox basically to to this planned obsolescence uh, system um, but not necessarily not necessarily the case uh, let me share with you in the in the next few minutes if I may uh, some of my thoughts about circularity and the concept of circular economy I'm aware of the time so please if I overextend do f feel free to say, well, you're, you're talking too much. Um, I mean, the concept of circular economy has obviously been gaining a, a great deal of attention recently. Um, political discussions, um, basically, when we think about uh, companies and different types of government, because since the Industrial Revolution, we have been, as I said er earlier, overutilizing the resources that we have. Um, the circular economy model, when we think about circularity, it requires that firms in different um, uh, sectors across the value chain um, literally um, integrate some kind of disruptive technology. And when we talk about disruptive technology or any kind of disruption, it doesn't have to be negative. It could be a positive disruption. Um, and, and the idea here is that uh, we are thinking about technology, we're thinking about business design, we're thinking about different models, we, we're thinking about certain things relating to uh, longevity. We're thinking about certain things relating to uh, reuse, renewability, refurbishment, the, the servitization of products, and so on and so forth. So it is important to take that into account as part of a circular uh, system. When we think about a, uh, about a circular system, it, 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 we, we cannot ignore the fact that companies have to buy into it. Because if companies do not buy into it, they're going to say, well, what's in it for the companies? I'm like, you know, are we really taking into account the, the private cost as well as the social cost? And probably as economists, we always teach our students that you know, when, when, when decisions are made on an organizational level, uh, you need to understand and what are the costs involved in order to charge a price. And once you have a price, you have a margin, and hopefully you make a profit. Now, uh, but the, the, the issue that we ask in economics, and that is, well, do firms take into account the social cost in addition to the private cost? Now, for firms to understand that, and I'm sure firms do understand that, there's no question about that, but we need uh, for all of us to understand that there, you know, firms operate in a, in a complex system. Um, firms, you know, organizations work in a, in a macro system system, in a meso system, and in a micro system. And that's the way I'm going to be literally uh, dealing with circularity and circular economy. We need to think about it from a macro perspective. We need to think about it from a meso perspective. And we need to think about it from a micro perspective. The macro perspective in includes policies. It includes the macro economy. It includes international trade. It includes uh, all the, the, the bigger environmental issues that are around us, even the environment, the society, tastes, preferences, and so on. The meso picture, to a large extent, we 
we're dealing with the, with the sectors and the industry and the rules and the regulations. And then the micro picture, then we get to the individual firm in these different industries and in these different sectors to try and think about them. So we need to understand that because when a firm, any kind of firm, or company, or organization, small, medium, or large, uh, literally want to design, develop a strategy, they have to be aware of all of these aspects because if they are not aware of these aspects, then they are basically um, they're, they're, they're coming up with half-baked type of decisions. And that is what we would like to emphasize on. One of the things that comes up is the concept of the value chain. Um, um, a circular economy is going to have an impact on the value chain. When we think about the value chain, we're thinking about uh, uh, primary activities and also support activities. Um, and the primary activity, and when we think about a value chain, which describes the categories of activities within and around the firm, which creates a product. So you're producing a product, but you don't just produce a product. There's a whole range of different aspects that, is, that, that are adding value, uh, value to the product or the service. And they're coming from different uh, directions. So, so when we think about the, the, uh, the value chain, we need to think about the, 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 the aspects around the product and what led to the production of that final product or service. And that's the value chain. Um, and then there is this primary activities and the support activities. So we can think about a circular economy in that context because this allows us to become a little bit more focused. So we don't want to be running after too many rabbits. And that's one of the things that we, we because we're going to catch none. It is very, very important to focus. And even if you make some success and some good strides in certain areas, I mean, I think it's inevitable there will be some spillover effects that will take place in other areas. But if we focus on something and not only start focusing on all of these moving islands that they're going every, everywhere without any consolidation, then we're probably going to have more of a challenge than an opportunity in solving some of the economic problems. Um, I mean, um, I mean the, the idea uh, basically of, of, of circularity, um, um, I mean, you know, I, I, one of the things that we would like to emphasize is that there are a number of issues that we have to be aware of, and we are all, I'm sure, aware of, is that uh, there is a problem with the, probably in many areas of the world, with the air we breathe. Uh, with the water we drink, with the soil we use to produce uh, basically our food, and in addition to that, the energy we consume. And so when we think about the, the, the air we breathe, the, the water we drink, the, um, the, the soil we use to produce our food, and the energy, these are the elements of life. And if we are not careful about how we basically make sure that these elements of life are going to sustain us and they're going to be sustainable, um, then obviously we're going to have a lot of challenges. And I think a circular economy is, 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 a, a, is an important model to think about um, that will hopefully uh, contribute to um, uh, trying to make sure uh, that we have um, good air, good water, good soil, and so on and so forth. And um, there have been a number of studies uh, that actually mention that, that if we are going to meet the demand of the world, uh, we're probably going to be needing two planets in, by 2030. And if we're going to be needing the demand of the world, um, that will probably be needing three planets in 2050. These were the studies that were done. I didn't do these studies, but at least I can reference them. That they, they say, <coughs> they have actually uh, done that. Now, the question that we need to ask from the economics perspective is that, can we create a new planet? Can we create a, uh, basically, by 2030, let's, let's put it this way, can we do that? Can we create a new, uh, pl a third planet by 2050? And obviously, the answer is, is a clear no. Uh, so what can we do to literally meet the demand that exists in our societies, in our world, and so on and so forth, where there is going to be competition for resources, where there's going to be competition for material, where there's going to be competition for energy, where there's going to be competition for markets, we're going to be competition for a whole range of different things, and that is going to be adding quite a bit of pressure. Um, I mean, obviously, one of the things that I would like to really emphasize is that when we think about um, a circular economy, I would like to emphasize that it is about literally using as few resources as possible. Uh, it is about um, using these resources for as long as possible, so trying to extend the life of the, of the resource and the life of the asset. Uh, uh, reuse as much of these uh, components as possible. Uh, extract as much value from those resources uh, in the most effective way possible, and then recover and regenerate as much of those materials and products at the end of their useful life 
uh, when and if possible. Note the word possible is very frequent here. Because it is about, it is about possibilities. It is about, it is nothing is certain. We're making decisions under conditions of uncertainty continuously. So we are trying to basically, if possible, so we have to also be realistic. And that is something that we need to, to focus on. So this is basically the difference between what we would think as a linear model. It is um, uh, re basically uh, the resource extraction, production, distribution, consumption, and waste. Um, and um, a circular economy has got to deal with all of these individual um, aspects that I've just mentioned. That's what circular economy is not, a, and that's why I'm saying a circular economy is not about recycling. So it is, um, if we're going to be talking about recycling, it's going to be from the waste. Um, basically side of this model. A circular economy has got to start from, from the beginning. And that is where I call it circularity by design. There's going to be a pressure on industrial engineers and there's going to be a pressure on design engineers if we're going to move forward with the concept of circular economy to literally start thinking about the products that they produce with a view of getting the product back at the end of their life cycle. Uh, without having it to be disposed anywhere in a landfill and so on and so forth. So this is what we call circularity by design, and this is an important part of the circular e economy uh, model. If I share with you some of the uh, numbers that we have, um, at least, um, and we'll use Europe um, as, as an example, um, the amount of food wasted in the value chain is about 31% according to some studies. Uh, the fruits and vegetables of their edible mass is lost, which is about 46%. When we, th when we think about the original value of steel that is lost after the first use, recycled is about 30%. And these are estimated numbers. I and mean, some of them, you know, give or take, they could be right, wrong. But anyway, at least we have some indications. We can take them as indications. Now, we can't be 100% precise, but at least these are indications. The original value of pet cardboard paper is lost after the first use, recycled, anywhere between 60 to 70%. Uh, cars that are parked, not used, 92%. Um, office uh, space not used during office hours, during work, is about 60%. So, so we can see the amount of waste that we have, and, and, and basically uh, we can uh, have the opportunity uh, to do something about it. Now, it is, um, it is, about, uh, it is not about the cradle to grave. It is, not about, it is basically about the, the cradle to cradle, which I'm sure you've heard uh, some of these terms. So why should we really care about the circular economy? We should care about the circular economy because we are wasting too much. That's point number one. We are wasting too much. Two, technology in itself, and I would like to emphasize that, technology in itself is insufficient to resolve resi reliance on resources. So we can't just depend on technology. Sometimes we have to go back to basics. And going back to basics is, is, is not a bad thing. You can innovate, actually, by going back to basics as well, which is a very, very interesting thing. Produce more and better economic outcomes. So at the end of the day, uh, we don't want to have a system where, where there's going to be, um, you know, uh, there's going to be a, a zero-sum game. We would like everyone in our society, economy, uh, system to also benefit from the introduction of such a system. Somebody even mentioned to me the other day, say, well, okay, a circular economy is really, and, and I, I loved what he said, it is basically about people, it is about the planet, and it's about profit. So it is the three Ps, you know, people, planet, and profit. So there's nothing wrong with actually making a profit and, and think about it as a, as a social enterprise. And, but, at, at the same, but the important thing is that we need to think about people and the planet and then how we can build the business models to make this uh, feasible. Um, I, mean, I don't want to bore you with the, with the academic details of that, but uh, um, um, we are based in the University of Cambridge, and, 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 and we can be a little bit detailed when it comes to the academic issues. Um, but, uh, but the important thing is that I would like to emphasize is that I think we have an opportunity to uh, literally expo explore uh, the benefits of circularity and the benefits of circular economy. And I think a, a, a city like Peterborough um, um, is, 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 is doing great things with regard to the uh, um, w with regard to circular economy. And I think um, it will definitely be uh, one of the pioneers in this area, uh, not only in the UK, where we're going to definitely be extremely proud of, but I think it will be one of the great pioneers in the world. And I think this is, this is very, I'm like, as part of uh, uh, my studies, yes, I do um, uh, trot and, and travel, and I look at different cities, uh, but I think, I think it's great that we have uh, a city like the city of Peterborough uh, that is taking this uh, very, very seriously. Um, I'm sorry to have uh, bored you with this, um, but um, um, thank you very much for giving me the opportunity, and I wish you all the best and the best of luck for everything. Thank you. Thank you.